Hey everybody, Icy Cat here. The patch notes were released today for Season 4's mid-season reinforcements. We're going to break down all the details of what you can expect to change tomorrow. The Season 4 mid-season reinforcement patch 5.2 goes live tomorrow, December 15th. We talked about some of these changes in my other video a few days ago, but the patch notes that were released today gives us more specifics, a few changes, clarifications, and more. Let's start with the operator changes. Tachanka is buffed by getting a foldable shield added to his turret. This three-panel shield covers his head and upper body, preventing him from being headshot. It is destructible and takes 500 hit points of damage. Once broken, the turret can still function without the shield. They also added recoil and a bit of spread to the gun over distance to reduce the effectiveness of using it to spawn peak over long range. The shield itself looks like some kind of metal pop-up book construction and deploys into a forward-facing cage with panels that wrap around on 45 degree angles. This gives slight protection to the sides as well. Lettering on the shield itself spells out Lord in Russian. That's a nod to the community nickname given to Tachanka. This image was posted with Tachanka along with an odd side story about how Tachanka was declared dead on November 13th, and while he recovered at Hereford Base, his gun turret was inspected and deemed needing of an upgrade, and how a team of engineers led by a someone named Elena Mira Alvarez del Manzano added the upgrades to Tachanka's turret. Now this is an odd mention of a very lengthy and specific Spanish name. We know that one of the next CTUs to be coming in year two is a Spanish counterterrorism unit. Also, the Mira in the name appears in quotes. That's how you would usually write out a name if you're trying to separate a nickname that was appearing within the context of the full name. Mira is Spanish for look or sight. Could this be a hint to an upcoming operator's name or ability? Maybe something to do with recon or intelligence, perhaps even another sniper. If you looked carefully at the year two flag image, you could see a silhouette of one operator who might have had a sniper rifle. <clears throat> now this operator's silhouette was mostly behind a flag. There was just a little bit of it peeking out on the side. Some people think that might've just simply been placeholder art and not an actual image of the real operator. It's all sort of speculative. The image shows her holding a spanner and doing the repairs to Tichanka's shield. So maybe her ability is more engineering related. It did say she was leading a team of engineers. It could also be completely unrelated to an incoming operator, but it's worth noting considering that we do have this really long specific Spanish name, a nickname within that Spanish name that denotes something that could be seen as an ability or an operator name, and the fact that one of the year two CTU teams is going to be from Spain. So maybe it's nothing, or maybe it's a hint of things to come. We also have the new map Bartlett University arriving. This map was previously only playable in situations or in disarm bomb terrorist hunt under general matchmaking, where it would occasionally show up. But now it will be available for PvP multiplayer, as well as a selectable map for any custom game or terrorist hunt mode. It differs a little bit from its old Article 5 situations version. When you would play it there, it was filled with toxic yellow gas that filled the map and obscured your lines of vision. You really couldn't see very far down any of the hallways or even from one side of the room to the other. Well, those gas effects have now been taken out. Additionally, the old map didn't have very good destruction. There weren't very many surfaces that you could breach through, and that's been improved, so overall destruction has been upgraded. It also apparently has a better visual layout, so you can find your way around the map more easily, and a new two-layer destruction. I'm not entirely sure what new two-layer destruction means. If that's more of a reference to the fact that the original version of this map didn't have very good destruction, and this brings it up to par with the others, or if the new two-layer destruction implies some kind of new destruction mechanic. But either Either way, we'll find out tomorrow. We also have some other operator changes. Fuse will now go from two cluster charges to three total cluster charges. Each sub grenade that the cluster charges shoot out will have a larger explosive radius. They used to detonate in an area up to 2.5 meters. Well, now that's being upgraded to 4.2 meters overall. The explosive pucks are lethal from zero meters to 1.2 meters with explosive base damage fall off occurring out to 4.2 meters. That means the further away you are from the source of the detonation, the less damage you're likely to receive, but they do cover a wider area in general now. And that's more meant to help him flush out rooms more effectively and force defenders to scatter and reposition. Hostage collateral damage will be at an all-time high, so be careful. Bandit now gets a fourth battery. This is to help him more effectively counter the Thermite Hibana combo, or to counter Thatcher's EMP grenades with the Bandit trick of juggling batteries. Smoke gets an incoming buff as well. He'll now be able to throw his gas grenades more like frag grenades. He previously used a nitro cell toss throwing profile, as though the gas grenades were very heavy. The throw animation was slow, and the range of the toss was very short. Now that it uses a frag grenade throwing profile, the toss animation itself is much faster, and the grenade throw range is significantly further. 
This should help him whenever he needs to use his ability as more of a two-step grenade as opposed to a pre-placed trap. Blackbeard, on the other hand, gets a very heavy-handed series of nerfs, with his shield health reduced from 150 hit points down to 60 hit points. That means his shield will now shatter when being hit by as few as only one or two bullets. Back when Blackbeard was first released, he had only a single shield that could withstand 800 hit points of damage, so this will be yet another nerf to his shield health. But that's not all. His aim down sight speeds increased from 0.25 seconds to 0.7 seconds. This differs a little bit from the information we got in the mid-season reinforcements live stream a few days ago when it was said to be a half second. So this goes two tenths of a second even further than that. Additionally, his ADS time coming out of sprint increased from 0.35 to 0.8 seconds. Honestly, a lot of people are wondering if he's even going to be a useful operator anymore. While some players will love this nerf to Blackbeard, and indeed some seem to even find it funny, a lot of people are just plain mad about it. Especially considering this is a DLC operator. Whether you paid $30 for the season pass, 5 bucks for the 600 rainbow credits, or 25,000 renown to unlock him, you had to invest in this character one way or the other if you decided to unlock Blackbeard. Some people are really upset at this being such a heavy-handed nerf on top of an operator who was already nerfed before. It's a controversial change to be sure, no matter which side of the argument you're on. The last operator change comes to the third Spetsnaz operator getting a change for this patch. Glaz has had his rate of fire doubled, along with less recoil kick to a sniper rifle to chain shots together more effectively. His player damage and environmental damage remain the same. This will also make him more effective when not using his flip scope in more CQB engagements. A few Defender submachine guns are getting a big tweak. Pulse and Castle's UMP-45, Caveda's M12, Frost 9mm C1, and Smoke's FMG9 get significantly enhanced recoil profiles for stability and accuracy. Most other guns on both attack and defense are getting minor recoil and centering tweaks to smooth things out. If you look on the list, the numbers can appear quite large in some instances, however they assure us that even though the numbers look large, the effects themselves are going to be relatively smaller. This affects most primaries and a fair amount of secondaries as well, so be sure to check your favorite weapons as their handling profiles may have changed. Shields are now resistant against explosions. This is a directional resistance. Explosions will now take into account how much of the operator's body was protected by the shield. Every part that was fully covered by the shield will resist up to 80% explosive damage from the direction the shield is facing only. The total damage will take into account which parts of the body were hit, so feet and hands will take less damage than the torso or the head. Shields will still be able to be taken out by throwing the nitro cell past the shield or to the side of the shield. This change to shields does not apply to Blackbeard or Tachanka. So really you just have to think of it as wherever the metal wall is protecting the operator on the other side of that, the explosive damage will mostly not get through. So if you throw it in front, if the legs are exposed, you will still do a lot of damage there. However, if that operator is crouched, then the legs are protected by the shield. And as long as the shield is facing the direction of the explosive head on, they'll take minimal damage. The operator that will see the biggest benefit to this, of course, is Montaigne. When he has his shield fully extended, he will get a lot of protection from that. Speaking of things that blow up, grenade explosions are more consistent. Impact grenades will now use a radial explosion shape for a more consistent environmental destruction pattern. Explosions will now create holes that decrease in size with the distance from the detonation to the object being damaged. In other words, if you put an explosive right next to a wall, you'll blow out a big chunk of it. But if there's a separation of space between the explosion and the wall, the hole will be smaller as it gets further away from the point of detonation. Frag grenade patterns are changing a little bit too. They now use a radial detonation profile near the frag, but the shrapnel holes can still occur at longer ranges. We also have some fixes to bugs and overall game improvements. Now I'm not going to go into the full list as that would be too exhaustive and some of the changes are pretty specific. Like not being able to shoot through a certain wall on a certain map for an exploit, or a gun seeming to disappear in a certain specific animation sequence under a certain condition, but I'll go over at least some of the more significant ones here quickly. If a player has Rook armor equipped, next shot will no longer count as a down but not out state instead of death. Here's a cool one, players no longer receive threat indicators when being shot by silenced weapons. Previously there was an exploit where nitro cells and gas grenades could sometimes be thrown outside during the preparation phase, you can no longer do that. Another big one is that rubber banding on breached walls and barricades was causing a replication error and that's now been fixed. So if you were to breach a hole through a reinforced wall and then you would try to run into the room and get snapped back to the other side of the wall, that's specifically what this is talking about and that should no longer be occurring. That was a very specific kind of replication error. Now do note there are still instances of rubber banding that occur for other reasons. This won't necessarily have anything to do with fixing those problems. This is just to deal with rubber banding on breached walls and barricades 
and the error that was tied to that. A slight buff for Buck, he wasn't consistently destroying wall studs with his master key attachments, and you should experience overall more consistency shooting the holes in the walls without leaving the wall studs behind to get in your way. Caveda's interrogation can once again no longer be interrupted by logging out. So initially when that operator first came out during an interrogation, somebody could leave the match and interrupt the interrogation, denying the intel to the defensive team. Then they fixed it so that even if the person left, that would still occur. But then it broke again when season four first came out and you could go back to logging out in the middle of the interrogation sequence. So now it's back to being fixed again. Good news for all you Twitch operators out there. Her shock drone is now getting her targeting reticle back during the prep phase. This was a glitch. It went away in the beginning of season four and you didn't have your target reticle to aim where you were shooting. Well, you've got it back now. Also, there was an error where it wouldn't deal any damage with the first shot of the drone. That's been fixed, so now the shock drone is back to working as intended across the board. Echo now gets assist points when disorienting an enemy that a teammate kills. A lot of people think that's how it should have been all along. I mean, he is assisting with that kill. Even if it wasn't a damage-based assist, he's still helping the team out, so a kill that results from that will now earn you some points. More good news for the other Season 4 operator, Hibana's gadget should no longer freeze the game when it's used. And finally, lighting coming in from outside shouldn't be as bad to see outside. Now, this is one that we'll see. Um, I feel like they promise us like every significant patch that comes along that the lighting has been taken care of, that these won't be as big of an issues. And yet it seems to be a huge problem. Just last night I was playing on yacht and I was on the second floor looking up this third floor stairs to the deck where the casino is. And it was like I was looking into the sun, even though I was inside and that just shouldn't have been happening. And that's actually been occurring for many patches now where they keep saying they fixed the lighting. So we'll see on this one. I'll believe it when I see it. Now, those are just kind of the highlight changes. For a complete list of all the other changes and fixes, go to rainbow6.ub.com or check out the official forums or subreddit, the links to which are in the comments below the video player. The Season 4 Mid-Season Reinforcements patch goes live tomorrow, December 15th on all platforms. The times are between 9 and 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for PS4, 10 to 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Xbox One, and 11 to 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for PC. Do understand that sometimes there's a little bit of a delay when these go live, depending on things happening on their end. It's a technical process. They are updating the servers. So if it's like 10 minutes past that time, I wouldn't think it's anything to freak out about. It's still coming. It just might be pushed back a few minutes. That does sometimes happen on a live patch deploy on the servers. So these are approximate times. Now, in the days after release, I'll be doing updates for those things that have changed, as well as a series of map walkthrough videos for the new map Bartlett University. I'll also have a review up soon for the new premium digital content for Shield skins that came out yesterday. So what do you guys think of these changes to the game? Let me know in the comments below or share with me over at IcyCat25 on either Facebook or Twitter. If you want to stay up to date on all the latest news and information for Rainbow Six Siege, then please like and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.